The X page is still saved, uh, but it will flag a problem, and it flags it both in the problems view and also in the X page editor in the left margin, that little red X. Also in the right margin, it will show you where you have errors. And in the Applications Navigator, it will have a little red X next to that particular X page. And at the top level of X pages, a little red X to show you have an error in that particular X page or one of the X pages. OK, so adding controls. Let me first close this and open it again. It's my uh, controls aren't showing. OK, there we go. OK, so let's say uh, here's all the core controls. Well, let's say I do want to add a table to uh, use that to position my other controls better. So I'll go over to the table control, and I'll drag that to the X page where I want it. Then it will ask how many rows and columns I want. And there's our table. Then I'll go, in this case, I'll add a label control over to our first column of the table. And then I'll click on the label control and go to the properties, and I can give it a name. So let's say this is going to be used for our phone number. And this label up here will be used for the name. Now, we could use static text here, uh, but like I did uh, for the titles. But it's really best if you try to use everything on your X page in the form of a control. So if you do have some text that you want to add to your X page, it's best to use the label control. OK, then I'm going to add an edit box control. An edit box control is where the user can type in information. So I'll add two edit box controls. If you look over in my outline view, you see that I have my table in the outline view. And I can navigate down to the label. And when I click on it in the outline view, then it's highlighted in the X page editor. And at this point, I could go, uh, for example, make the labels bold. And I can highlight the other label in our X page, make that bold. And that sets the properties for that particular control. If I wanted to move something around, let's say I want to move the row of the table that has the phone, and I want to move it to the first row, I can use the outline view and just drag that up and move that. Now, we do have complete undo. So if I did Control-Z, that will undo my move. Now let's go look at the source view. And let's say I put in a. Uh, uh, somehow add an error. I call the tables like we had in the slide. When I go to save this, now you'll see that I have an error indication to the left of that particular tag, but also in the problems view, it's saying I have one error. I can click on the problems view tab, and I'll see my error. And now I can double click on that problem, and it will highlight uh, in my source view where the problem is. Also note in the uh, Applications Navigator that I have a little red X next to the title of this particular X page. Now one thing you have to be careful is let's say you're going and designing your X page and you're, you're previewing it and I go to preview and I'm not seeing my changes. Uh, notice how I didn't even get my table here. It's still showing me the X page from the time that it was last able to have a good compilation of the XML into Java. So you could be really, you know, get kind of mixed up by making changes and, and, and go to preview things, and then you don't see your changes and wonder what's going on. If that's happening to you, go to the problems view and make sure you don't have any errors. In this case, I do have an error, so it's it wasn't compiling this most recent version of the X page. But if I come over and save or fix my error and save it, the problem will go away. And now when I preview this, 
we'll see our table. Okay, so let's go on. Um, we went through the previewing and troubleshooting errors. And this brings us up to an activity. And I'm going to explain the activities now, uh, but we're not going to take the time out to do them uh, during the webinar since uh, many of you haven't installed the, uh, the course. So let me just point out uh, the activity, a few things about the activity. Again, start at the lessons database, open that up, and go to module two. We went through the lesson creating an X page. Again, if you want to review this, go through this lesson on your own. And as you see, we have a lot of detail in this lesson. That's the way TLCC courses work. Uh, all our courses are taken using the notes client, and our lessons are very detailed in terms of of uh, the information we're trying to teach you. Uh, so after this lesson, we now have the activity creating and previewing an X page. Uh, everything is done locally. You don't need to put anything on a server. We use the local HTTP preview task. And if you haven't started that yet, uh, you only have to do that once uh, for each session. Then you use the button in step one to start your HTTP task. I've already started mine, so I can go right to step two, and we can see what this activity is going to look like when you're done doing your X page that you're going to create. So it looks very similar to what I built in the, uh, in the walkthrough. So now you come back to the notes client and go to the activity steps tab. Uh, use, uh, we're going to have you create a new X page. When you're navigating two different databases in Designer, use the button from the activities uh, steps in the notes client, because this button will take you right to where you need to go. So if I switch over to my Designer client, it will open up my Workbench uh, database, because that's where you need to be, and you can switch over to the XPages design task or design a list and create your first X page. So again, you know, use those buttons to get you to the right place. And then you follow the instructions in the notes client uh, for the various uh, steps. So you can switch back and forth between your designer and your notes client to follow these instructions. Okay, so the next lesson oops, is going to uh, be presented by Paul Della Nevia. And that will be on using the view control to um, be able to display information from a domino view. So, Paul, I'm going to switch control over to you. Okay. And, <clears throat> and can you hear me, Howard? Yep. You're, you're a live, Paul. Okay. And what are you seeing on a screen right now? We are seeing your Domino designer. Okay, very good. Okay, thank you, Howard. I'm going to continue uh, with the next lesson. So uh, what we're going to focus on next is how to display a Domino view on an X page. Um, and then we'll, uh, I'll take uh, uh, on in the following lesson, how to display uh, existing documents uh, when they're clicked on in that view, actually a view control in the X page. So first we're going to focus on displaying a domino view in our next page. And this is a familiar diagram that Howard showed us. Uh, basic Notes application has forms for displaying uh, uh, domino documents and views for aggregating those in that tabular format. Uh, and we're going to focus on very basic application where we're going to uh, display the customer's uh, by name view on an X page. Again, you saw this earlier, Howard showed us this. Um, in X page design, X pages own the presentation layer. Anything that um, is presented is rendered to the user um, on their glass. 
uh, will be through an X page design element or the sub X page de design element custom controls. Um, your views, your domino views, are relegated to a, um, a data source, uh, uh, basically where they're providing a schema, which columns to present in that uh, X page. Uh, there are two ways to create uh, a domino view uh, uh, on an X page. One is to add a view control from the container palette and then specify which domino view you want to display in that view control. The other approach is to first define your data source in your X page properties. So define it, you know, where is the view? Is it in the current application or another application? And then the name of the view. So that's the first part of the process. And then from the data palette, select which columns in that view schema, uh, which columns you want to display in your view control. And just drag them and drop them over onto your X page. And the result uh, using either method is uh, kind of similar to designing a view, it's that tabular format uh, where you have columns to display uh, the column data for the documents that are displayed in the view. So let's take a look at that in Designer. So I've created a, a, a customer's application. I just copied uh, one of the existing customer applications that, that you um, or that was installed on your local system, um, and I copied it into my notes data or my notes data root directory and called it customer.nsf. Then I stripped out any existing X pages or custom controls just to uh, begin with a fresh start. Now, I'm going to work on the first part of the design where I'm going to create an X page to display one of the existing views, specifically the customer by name view. And let's take a look at that view design here in Designer. And I can see there's a, a number of columns, a, a customer column, a city column, contact column to display whatever is in the contact field phone, and this sales order lookup column. Now that's a specialized hidden column that's used just for uh, database lookup. So hidden in our notes application, um, no need to present it in our X page application, so we'll exclude that from our X page, and I'll show you how to do that. So we're going to create an X page to display, just like that view, the contents or that aggregated document information. So here in my X page design list, in my customer's application, currently there are no X pages. I'm